Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Namaste Village and the Namaste Experience. It feels great to enter the day in quiet, to listen deeply, and to know that we are being heard, to know that spirit is always available if we would but create the space, if we would but allow that opening within our own hearts to listen. In quiet, I receive God's word today. In quiet, I receive God's word. In quiet, I receive God's word today. In quiet, I receive God's word. Let this day be a day of stillness and of quiet listening. Your Father hears your word today to you from deep within your mind. In quiet I receive God's word today. In quiet I receive God's word. In quiet, I receive God's word today. In quiet, I receive God's But I want to begin by asking a question. What is a shadow? You don't have to answer it, but think about it in your mind. What exactly is a shadow? We could say it's nothing, and that would be correct. But more specifically, I think we could say that a shadow is the manifestation of blocked light. Something is blocking the light, and it casts a shadow on a wall, on the ground, whatever it may be. And if we were to become confused and to give that shadow value, to think that that shadow is a thing that we should love or resist, then we have given that shadow something that it does not have instead of realizing that it's nothing but the manifestation of black light and the solution to any shadow, to stop seeing the shadow is simply to turn back toward the light. So if you imagine you're standing, the light is behind you and you literally, who you think you are is that which is blocking the light, blocking your experience of the eternal light. And because the light is behind you, it's casting a shadow onto the ground, and you think that that shadow is who you are. And you give it all these qualities that it does not have. That is literally what we have done in perception. We've given a shadow value. Now, today we're going to be going back to Joel Goldsmith, just because I... I think he's he's great, and and he talks about this subject so well. And but there's one particular focus that that we're going to have today that we didn't have two days ago. But if you remember where where we left off, he he says that what we really need is just the ability to look at a shadow and say, "You're a shadow. So what? 
whatever. You have no power over me. You're just a shadow. But there's a step beyond that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me read a little bit of, of this. In fact, I'm going to read just the, the, the end of, uh, of one section. And I'm going to skip to another. But in these couple of sentences, he, he shows us exactly what our goal is. He says, the degree to which we can look at a shadow and not be disturbed by it and not immediately have to say, there's no such thing. It does not exist in reality. That constitutes your degree of unfolded Christhood. Not having to look at it and say, you're just a shadow. You have no power over me. But to disregard it completely because it is a shadow. You see, to, what he's saying is that even to engage with it on any level is still the belief, maybe not as strong as the belief that you had within your egoic mind before, but it is still within the belief that that is something I need to contend with. So what he's saying is that the what constitutes your unfolded Christhood, I like that, your unfolded Christhood, is the ability just to look past it. Let me read the whole thing again. The degree to which we can look at a shadow and not be disturbed by it, and not immediately have to say, there's no such thing, it does not exist in reality. That is what constitutes your degree of unfolded Christhood. One more sentence. There must be no resistance to error, since error is to be recognized as nothingness. So this is the point that, that we have reached now. We have come to the point now where knowing who we are, that we are each one of us the holy, perfect child of God, complete and healed and whole, shining in the reflection of God's love. Knowing that, and knowing that a shadow is nothing more than the manifestation of black light, what he's saying here is do not engage. Just turn back toward the light. There's no need to stand there looking at the shadow, telling the shadow what it is. You're just a shadow. Because you're still giving it a, a level of reality by doing so. We're going to talk in a moment of how we apply this to the shadow of the world. But, but using it as a shadow, the, the thing that is cast upon the ground or the wall or whatever it may be. This is a good thing. It helps us to understand what we're talking about. But the ability to not engage. That's what he's talking about. Let me read a little bit more from the next pair, from the next chapter. He says, the thing that helps is to come into an actual awareness of the unreality of air. This is what Joel talks about so often, the unreality of air. E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, not air. Error. The unreality of error. And to realize why it is unreal. What makes it unreal? That it is unreal because in and of itself, it never was anything. You have come to a place in your whole mind now where you are perfectly capable of this. Each one of you has come into a place now where the brightness of and the illumination of reality has created such a foundation that you can now disregard that which never was instead of telling that which never was that it never was. Do you see the difference? This is the next and very important step. Whatever. Ain't a thing. And that's what, what someone like Joel has clearly come into a full experience of, but no more so than you. It's what Joel is calling your unfolded Christhood. Your Christhood is, is unfolding like a flower in bloom. 
Maybe at first it's tight. It's afraid of, of the heat, of the sun, of the warmth, of the rain. And it, it holds itself tight. But that is not where you are now. It may be where you were at one time. But you have, in joining with your mighty companions, as we do here, you have come to an unfolded state of grace where you can now open up and, and realize there was never anything to fear because the shadow never had any reality. I don't need to tell the shadow that it's a shadow. Does that make sense? This is the next step in your unfolded Christhood. Let me read further. Our reaction to a shadow is where our training comes in. This is the mind training, our reaction. Not in doing something to error, but in developing our reaction to it, to the place where we can actually look at it and say, ah, thank you, shadow. Thank you. All this leads us to the point in which there is no mental resistance to error. This is the key. No mental resistance to that which never was and never could be. Once again, the need or the feeling to dismiss that which is not real, that which is error, that which is shadow, is perhaps the first stage, because at least you realize what it is. That's maybe where a lot of us find ourselves. We, we have come to a point of, of illumined mind consciousness where we can see that the, the shadow is the shadow instead of having a box with the shadow or love the shadow or anything else. Now we, we can just dismiss it. Thank you, actually. He's saying to thank the shadow because it has brought you to this point of illumined grace or unfolded Christhood. That is wherein this work differs entirely from much metaphysical teaching. We are developing ourselves to a point of non-resistance to error. This is why one like Jesus can simply say the word or have a, a woman touch the hem of his garment. There is no resistance to error there in that consciousness now the truth is there is no resistance to error within you either but there is the illusion of the well we won't go there that we're going to a whole nother level let's keep it simple resist not evil you've all heard that yeah don't even resist it don't fight it do nothing just keep your mind and your heart and your eyes focused on the one reality itself. So how does this apply to our daily life? When we come in contact with a situation where uh, that resistance seems to be palpable, where we're with someone or we're watching the news or whatever it may be. If I'm, if I'm watching the news or I'm on CNN.com or whatever it is, and, and I see something that disturbs me. What, what is my, my first reaction? Well, Joel said it pretty clearly. Thank you. Thank you to the shadow, because it's showing me what a shadow is, what an unreal world really is. I don't see this is where a, a lot of people get tripped up. And it is a very, I have to admit, a, a very difficult decision or position that on one hand, and I, I was talking to Larry, where's Larry? I was talking to Larry about this a couple of days ago. On one hand, we could look at the world and say there is such trauma, such dramas, children who are being abused, people who are being killed, terrible situations. And that certainly is how it appears to be. Are, are we to ignore that? Are we to hide our head in the sand and say, that is not real? Kind of. But not in a way that blocks us from our love and compassion. 
You see, you could say that, oh, that's not real. I'm not going to look at it. Or I could say, that is not real. Only love is real and look directly through it. Do you see the difference? Not to turn away. Oh, that's not real. I shouldn't look at that. But to look through it to the reality that is behind every manifest form. And in doing that, to see that there is no shadow, as Joel is saying, that there is only love, that there is only the Christ unfolding itself. So if the Holy Spirit is guiding me and I feel that strong guidance to assert myself in a situation, if if I see um, someone being uh, abused in front of me, Am am I going to just say, no, that's not real and turn away? I'm going to follow the direction of love in that moment while knowing that the shadow is just a shadow, that that it is not real. While knowing that the the real cannot be threatened. So this is what is before us now at this last stage, the borderland that we find ourselves in before we take that final step. Do you all realize that that's what this is? This is the borderland. This is, we could call it the happy dream. But I I like to think of it as the borderland because it is that still quiet place where all of the shadows have begun to fall away and we find ourselves in that experience of unfolding grace or unfolding Christhood where all of the drama and trauma and all of those things can't really touch us. But it is not the final goal. A lot of people want to stay in the borderland. The borderland is not the goal. The borderland is a moment of respite before we take that step of which we cannot speak. The step that was never required because it never actually, we never actually left heaven. But we seem to have, we believe we have, And that's where we find ourselves here at Namaste Village. That's where we find ourselves wherever we are. If we are uncompromising with this message, which is totally uncompromising to you, it never compromises you, who you are, its vision of you. Love sees you as love. You have chosen to see yourself as something other than, but now you've come back. That's what the borderland is. You've returned. So, there is no shadow. We look through to love itself. So, Vicki, I'd love to hear what you have to share about that. Take it away. All right. Well, happy Silent Wednesday, everyone. This is my favorite day. And I love that the power I feel or the the force I feel in sharing silence is a movement that helps us ascend, literally ascend to the father in our mind, to the creator. But I'm going to pick up a little bit on what you were talking about with Joel, because the his teaching on nothingness is so simple and so helpful. It's like breaking a spell. And that ability to finally look at all of the things, good and bad, it's important for me that I recognize it in the good and the or the bad, they're equally nothing. And that to see through them and simply see that this is not anything that has to ever affect us. We're always afraid that we are victims of something that seems to be threatening, but that it's nothing and we can dismiss it and we literally turn to the light within. We literally see through all those shadows. So um, it is like breaking a spell. And in a day of silence, when we have times of silence, that's when the, the shadows of our mind seem to come into our awareness, which is the most helpful thing that can happen here right now. We want all of those shadows that are still left in our mind that we 
we don't catch maybe because we're busy or we're here and there. But when we have a day of silence, those shadows are welcome because there's nothing blocking them. There's no distraction and they come into our mind and that's a holy day. That's a holy moment where we can willingly enjoy this moment of welcoming those shadows, doing nothing with them, resist not evil, like you said, and let them pass. Because if we do not engage what isn't, what is comes shining through. But when we engage the shadow, we solidify it. And then we have to wrestle with it and all sorts of things. So when we resist not evil and we let those shadows in our mind, whatever, and a shadow is nothing more than a judgment on anyone or anything. So we are going to have our mind filled with vision that's full of the light that we share, or we're going to have little thoughts of judgment come up. So with those little thoughts of judgment, day of silence is a day to let them rise, let them pass, let them rise, let them pass. What I feel like really is happening with all of us collectively is that we are moving through We've been years talking about transformation, that forgiveness, that the, the forgiving of misperception of judgments, of illusions, of all of that has been a, a, such a prime focus. And we're moving now into a time where we do individually and collectively live in a borderland, in a happy experience. Our homes have come into harmony, our, our, where we sit, where we live has come into a kind of an ease and a grace in a natural harmony. And what we're ascending to now, I think the example might be Jesus and the transfiguration. We're ascending to the light that we are by recognizing it in one another, by looking for only that in one another, by looking for not the body of a person and how they, how they what our emotional reaction is, but seeing the light in each other's eyes, woohoo! <laughs> seeing that light, that spark, like seeing that peace, that joy, that love, really seeing it. And I'm a big one on enjoying. <laughs> I think enjoying everything is very underrated. Nobody ever spoke much about this, but I, I am because I can see how important it is. I can see that in wholeheartedly enjoying the light literally makes everything else fall away. It can't stay in the same space. It just can't stay in the same space in our minds. So as we look and see the light and smile at one another, and I mean everywhere at the grocery store, everywhere, I go talk to the guys mowing the lawn because I don't have a lot of other people around. And I thank them, thank them, thank them. And I love them. I, and they do such a wonderful job. But it isn't the wonderful job about mowing the lawn. What I see is like in Santo Agostino at Namaste Village, a brother who is 100% focused on giving to what's in front of him, the weed, the flower, the whatever. That's what I see. Because even if they're not, I see that they are. And my seeing becomes visible for those around me to see with me. That's how I feel like the world we see, we, we're here. He's, he's, salvation of the world depends on us. So it depends on us seeing the light in everyone and everything. And don't worry about anything else. It's that simple. And the more we enjoy the light in a child, in a statue, in a piece of artwork, in a book, we enjoy it. We fill up with, with gratitude. That's what enjoying something is. Thank you. And the, in quiet, we are more grateful than if, if we go around saying it everywhere. Our Wednesdays are very sacred. I feel like I'm so grateful, Brother James, because this is an, an emerging um, step that we're all in. Whether we keep silence or not, just the attention to it, even in our call, or in our Zoom right here, brings all of our awareness to it, whether we continue in the day or not. And if we continue in the day, we get the benefits of it more richly. But we're here for the transfiguration. Like when Jesus went on that mount and Moses and Elijah showed up 
it was an experience of no one dies and we're never alone. We're all together and everything's wondrous. That's the experience. But we cannot experience that until we have passed our own levels of resistance, going from transformation to transfiguration. That's what we're in right now. The transfiguration of ourselves because we do see it in one another. I see it in everybody here. It's like I see the light. It's not hard. It's just the natural glow. That's why I guess everyone is painted with halos. Linda Flock, easy to see around you. You've got a natural big halo around you. But it's what is already there. And that not that so much more, I don't know, like fills my heart with desire. This is no different than saying, um, what is it? Keep your eyes single. That's what it, it, the uh, Bible says. Let thy eye be single to the light. And Jimmy James, he used to say, swish, swish to Smith. That's all it is. Transformation, swish, swish to Smith. But when we can come to a point immediately and know, thank you, God, that none of this is so. Thank you that we are so as you created us. Thank you for that. As we live in that gratitude and enjoy it, we are using our mind for what Jesus in the Course calls for the atonement, for the experience of our oneness. We're using it for that and we're broadcasting that. We're all broadcasting by our vibration, like the prayer you woke up with, James, the other day, by our, what we love, what we broadcast, what we give, how we vibrate. That's where communication is. This is the lowest form of communication. And Francis knew it. When everything else fails, use words. Because if we are busy in the transfiguration of our consciousness and letting all the scales fall from our eyes and fall away, what's left is the unity of allness that we are all part of and the enjoyment of it and the giving of it and the, the being of it and letting it take us. There's no effort in it. It's re, no resistance, resist not evil and no effort. There's no, if this is effortless grace. So welcome to our transfiguration, everyone. Enjoy the attention to silence because it brings our greatest gifts. If there are shallow roots to be up, up, up you know, rooted, let them come up today. And if not, enjoy the light that we share. Thanks, Brother James. Thank you, everybody. I love you. Thank you, Vicki. Yes, just enjoy it. And enjoy the quiet and enjoy knowing that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to wrestle with that shadow any longer. Just turn back toward the light. All we need to do is to turn around. You see, it's the spin that has caused our problem. We, we continue to spin in circles rather than just holding still and facing the light. And the instant we do that, everything becomes clear. What becomes clear? Love becomes clear. Reality becomes clear. We're no longer confused. We're no longer wondering. We can just relax now. Relax into the grace that comes to us through silence. And through knowing that the shadow is just a shadow, we don't have to do anything with it. That's your unfolding Christhood. That's what's happening. Sometimes it's nice in these sessions just to, to, to have the reaffirmation of what is happening inside you. Every single one of you is feeling something moving, something being birthed, something shifting. Good. Feel that. Love that. Don't do anything with it. Just allow it to keep coming back. Stay together. Because it's in this joining, in the, in the intention and the uncompromising vision that we hold, that the momentum of this transformation continues. And we say together, Amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful, silent day. And all of you as well who are going to be joining us in our silence. Wonderful to have you. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.